Praise the Lord this morning. Hallelujah. Good morning, saints. Welcome to the King's Road broadcast. And those of you who are not born anew, welcome to the King's Road broadcast where we speak about the truth of God's Word and what the Lord, how He wants us to walk. He's given us Himself and He is absolutely at peace. He is the Prince of Peace. Amen. And He Amen. wants us to be in peace. That's right. Amen. Hallelujah. Let us exalt Him today. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. Above and beyond anything, let us exalt Him today. Praise you, Lord. Above anything and everything, for He is holy. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Holy is His name. Yes. His holy blood has ransomed us. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Holy One. We worship you, Lord. We thank you, Jesus. Be with us, O Lord, and in us in a mighty way today. Thank you, Jesus. Yes. Let your spirit flow, O oh Lord. Thank you, Lord. Pierce the darkness, O oh God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. In truth, Lord, in truth. Thank you, Lord. Remove oh, every hindrance, O oh Lord. Thank you, Lord. Stretch forth your mighty hand, O oh Lord. Put the adversary on the run, O oh Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, Lord. Put him on the run, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Let us know the battle is already won. Thank you, Lord. Yes, Lord. You have already won the battle, Lord. Let it manifest in all our lives, Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. That you have already won. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Cover all of us, Lord. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. With your holy protection, Lord. Praise your holy name. Let us open our mouths, O oh God, and you will fill them. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise you, Jesus. Hallelujah. He is worthy. Amen. Hallelujah. And he's stomping the devil under our feet because we are his children and he's already done it. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Today's message, have tranquility of soul. We can have it. The Lord says to us today, have tranquility of soul. You don't have to be agitated. You don't have to be upset. You don't. We don't. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. We can just praise the Lord and worship him. Father, we just thank you today. Thank you for this word. Thank you, Lord, that you are showing us right here in our house. And we believe you're showing your saints throughout the earth, Lord. That we can and we must and we will walk in peace. Because you've given us your peace. Not like the world gives, give you unto us. You give it because you are the Prince of Peace. You are inside of us. Hallelujah. Lord, I ask you to forgive every one of us right now. We just ask forgiveness, Jesus, for letting the soul man rise up against you. Because in the spirit man, there is rest. There is peace. And Lord... We want all that today from the Spirit, from your Spirit, the Holy Spirit, Jesus, and you and the Father dwelling in us, to, just to permeate our soul in every event today at work, in every event at home, in every event going to town or going to the store or whatever we're doing, Lord, we want your holy peace, your tranquility, your peace, Lord, just to permeate us and just to envelop us in every single situation that we come to into today lord that you have ordered for us we want to react lord with your peace 
and with your joy and with your love and your mercy and your grace and with your truth, hallelujah, and your righteousness. Oh, God, crush that serpent under our feet today. Every witch, every demonic force, Lord, throw them down. Throw them down, oh, God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Every spell, hex, hex, word curse, throw it down, Jesus. And you, Lord, you have the preeminence in our lives. Hallelujah. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Hallelujah. You know, <clears throat> when you were saying about the Lord wants us to have peace. Yes. He wants us to have tranquility of soul. Right. Well, it's the enemy's job to get us out of that. That's right. To get us into anxiety. That's right. To get us into irritation. To um, push our buttons, so to speak. Well, the Lord's thing is he wants us where we don't have no buttons to push. Right. Where we always know whatever circumstance... We don't have to get all full of anxiety. We don't have to get fearful. We don't have to get irritated. We can just take that captive and say, Lord, <coughs> I want to walk by your spirit today. Amen. Give me your grace, Father. That's right. Help me to walk in your grace and to understand that you have everything under control. Amen. And then he does. Yeah. Cause Look the, at this. I want to show you this. I didn't mean to cut you off. Okay. Do you want to say something no. else? Okay. I looked up the word tranquil. I would look for tranquility. Okay. But it's not in the Webster's 1828 dictionary. But it is tranquil, quiet, calm, undisturbed, peaceful, not agitated. Whoa. The atmosphere is tranquil. The state is tranquil. A tranquil retirement is desirable, but a tranquil mind is essential to happiness. Wow. Okay, now, when I typed that in, what I got was this word, tranquilize. <laughs> okay. Now, you think about this now. Here's the Lord leading this, this whole message. <laughs> tranquilize. Okay. Now, the world can give you pills to make you tranquilize. Mm -hmm. Okay. But that wears off, doesn't it? And you it see? can also alter your mind. And alter your and your, your organs in your body yeah, as well. Yeah, okay. Exactly. And, and but to quiet, to allay when agitated, tranquilize. Okay. To compose, to make calm and peaceful. This is the way the world is tranquilized. But the way of the Lord is tranquil, tranquility, mm -hmm. peace. You see, it comes from Jesus. See, the spirit man is to rule the soul man. This is how it's supposed to be. Okay. Before the fall, man's spirit was alive unto God, you see. And if he would have just remained obedient, then there wouldn't have been a fall. But God knew there was going to be a fall. I mean, I, I can't explain it and I can't understand it. Theologians try to wrap their heads around it and make all sorts of sense of it. But you really can't. It's just God's plan. And man fell and his spirit died. When you get born anew, you get a new spirit. Hallelujah. And then Jesus and the Father and the Holy Spirit come and dwell in you. And they are at peace right now. They, they don't have, they're not agitated. They're not worried. They're not fearful. Okay? They're at peace. He says we can have tranquility of soul. Okay? We can be tranquil. We can. It's just a In every choice, circumstance. Really. That's right. It exactly. Really is a choice. That's exactly right. And that's what we're going to talk about today because it's so vitally important that we see this and the Lord wants us to see it so that we can be absolutely overcomers like he calls us, you see. Right. We can either choose when these things attack us, you know, we can choose to take it captive and to say, no, I'm not going there. I'm going to trust you, Lord. I'm going to be calm in this. You've got everything under control. Or we can choose to run with what the devil wants us to run with. Okay. Amen. Now look, the soul, your reason, your mind, it begins right there. Yeah. Then your emotions. Kick in. And then your will. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now all of these three faculties in the soul of man is supposed to, and the ideal thing is that the spirit of man, our spirit man, ruled by the Holy Spirit, controls the reason controls the emotions controls the will you see it's all surrendered unto god that's that's where the cross comes in okay 
we surrender unto God our thinking. We surrender unto God our emotions. It doesn't mean you don't have emotion. You do. But they're ordered of God. God wants to control our emotions. God does not want us to move in this world by human compassion or human feelings. You see, by the soul. He wants us to move by his emotion, by his compassion. See, the Bible says Jesus had compassion on the multitudes because they were hungry. They had been with him a few days and they hadn't, nobody's left to go get anything to eat and he knew they needed some food. And so Jesus turned the five loaves and a couple of fish into enough to feed 5,000 plus women and children. I mean, this is the compassionate God we serve. He wants us to have that compassion. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. He does. You know, his whole walk was a spiritual walk. That's right. Everything he thought and did was in a spiritual way. That's right. He could see to the spiritual of the heart of That's people. That's right. That's right. He could see through to the what they were going through. Right. He could see through, you know, so that compassion it was a heavenly compassion right. and he because see. He, he saw it all Amen. when he looked at the Amen. person. That's he saw right. it all. And so it wasn't just him looking at the outward, right? you know, like so many today. Right. He looked past that. And see, this is what God wants us to do, I know, is to look past what you see in the natural realm. Right, exactly. He wants you to look past that into the spiritual realm of the whole picture of what's going on right you know and it explains a lot of time the reason people act the way they do if you can see the whole spiritual picture there and if you want to see the spiritual aspect god will let you see it that's right but you got to get out of that natural way of thinking that's right in order to see it that's exactly right so you can't be thinking natural and expect to see spiritual it's just not going to no, happen. That's right. That's right. And and the soul man now he'll try to mimic the spiritual. Okay, that's that's happening in religion. And I mean, when I was a Roman Catholic, I mean, boy, I got some real, you know, feeling and emotion. You know what I mean? But it wasn't of the Lord. It was all because of religion. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I felt closer to God when I did the Stations of the Cross. See, or when I prayed the rosary, which is witchcraft, okay, I thought it was holy. You see mm. what I mean? And it wasn't. It ain't holy at all, you yeah. see. And God showed me that. Today, I can rest in the Lord. I know that he has finished the work, and he's given me specific work to do. You and us together, specific work to do. And as long as we're in that work that he's given us, the charge he's given us, we can walk in peace. Hallelujah. Amen. And it we doesn't can have mean, that peace. Amen. It doesn't mean that you're not attacked right. when you set out to do God's will. That's right. Because the devil don't want you to do God's will. That's and right. he certainly doesn't want others to receive the truth of God's word. That's right. So, you know, he's going to attack that. But the thing is, what are we going to do with that? Right. See, Jesus already paid the price. He already... The work's already done. is already finished. He's already defeated. The devil's already defeated. Amen. Amen. Okay? Right. So if we can look at things in that frame of mind, spiritual frame of mind, when we get attacked and stuff happens or whatever because the enemy is coming against, if you stop, you're going to fall back. Right. But if you keep going, right. you no break matter through. if... Yeah, you break if, through. Right. That's if you're right. Not, if, That's right. No matter how hard it is or what the enemy is trying to do, if you keep going forward and you are crying out in your spirit to the Lord, say, Lord, I pray you help us, empower us to do this work you've called us to do and keep us and keep our minds clear. See, because the enemy <coughs> comes in Pardon and he, he tries to confuse you. That's right. He tries to trip your words up. He tries to twist your words, you know, trying to confuse you in your mind. That's his business. And what we have to do is know my mind is washed by the word. That's right. Lord, I pray wherever this thing is coming from, trying to do this, that you just remove it in Jesus' name. Amen. Take authority over it. Amen. Because we can tell you in our own lives, if we just stopped, you know, in so many 
instances that we've been attacked because we've been preaching the truth, if we just stopped, that would have been the beginning of the downward row. That's, that's right. Okay? That's right. It's, we know from our own experience you can't stop because you're going to slide back. That's right. You have to go forward, forward. Amen. and continue Amen. to go forward and, and get your vision in the right way, too. This is also something we've learned. When you're going through real bad, intense trials, get your vision in the correct focus. Not 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 on yourself. No, what but you're ahead going through. at right. the, the prize, the Lord. That's right. That's right. That's you know, right. You, you look ahead. You're walking down this the king's road. Amen. And you're looking ahead to the heavenly things and to the Savior that's out before you. That's right. Walked before you. That's right. Amen. You keep Praise looking it. at him. That's right. And as we do that, no matter what, and then pray, Lord, bring me through this. Amen. Bring me through it, Lord. And he will. Glory to his holy name. He's so good. He is. Now let's go to Romans 12. We're going to look at this. Have tranquility of soul. Now, it says in 1 John chapter 5 that the commandments of God are not grievous. Okay? Paul wrote down from his experience and through the Holy Spirit, Paul was writing to the believers in Rome, and he's writing to us today. This is coming to us from the heart of the Holy Spirit. I mean, from God Almighty, through the Apostle Paul. This is the Word of God. Okay? And if we do these things, we're going to have tranquility of soul. We're going to be obedient to the Lord okay we're going to walk in the white the righteousness that is Jesus Christ amen that's our robes our robes are righteousness and truth and 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 justice God's justice you see what I'm saying and it, it ties back in if you if you give in to the temptation that you're being attacked with by the enemy or your flesh is trying to rise up you give in to that the justice of God says you're going to reap something that's not going to be good, mm -hmm. okay? It's going to hurt your wife. It's going to hurt your husband. It's going to hurt your children. It's going to hurt your co-workers. It's going to hurt somebody around you. And it's going to hurt you, see? And it's going to make God just turn away a little bit from you. You see what I'm saying? And if you keep doing it, he turns away more. And then he'll just let you drift off if you just keep doing that. You see if what I'm saying? No repentance, if there's no repentance, that's right. If there's no repentance and a turning around, getting back on the right that's path, right. you know... God can't go there with you. That's right. So Paul, he gives us, he gives us this instruction mm -hmm. here to help us to stay in the narrow way and to stay in peace. Okay, so let's go through these and we'll talk about this. Hallelujah, because it's beautiful. It's the beautiful word of God, man. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God. Hallelujah. That ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. See, he's okay. given admonition there. I mean, hold that, hold that right there. I'm going to go over here. I want to look at this in Second Peter chapter 2. I mean, First Peter 2. Peter says, but ye, verse 9, ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, and holy nation, a peculiar people, that ye should show forth the praises of him who hath called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Now, we're a royal priesthood. Read verse 1 again of chapter 12 of Romans. I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice. Living sacrifice. Holy, acceptable unto God which is your reasonable service. The priest had a job. His service was to offer the sacrifice. Today, we are priests, okay? And we offer our bodies and everything it contains, your spirit and your soul. Mm -hmm. We give it to God every day. In other words, this is saying very clearly, separate yourself unto God. Right. A holy... Hallelujah. A holy, acceptable vessel that's right that's right unto god right. it doesn't say be in the world be of the world act just like the world do everything the world does no it doesn't say that it says holy right holy pure is what that means amen amen, amen. 
and you're not going to be pure if you're doing everything like the world being in the world and partaking so much of the world if you're going through stuff today and you don't feel that peace that the Lord is and you don't let's look at verse 2 look at verse 2 maybe ask the Lord to show you these things look and be not conformed right. to this world be not conformed to this world to this world be not conformed hallelujah fashioned alike right conformed to the to same the pattern same pattern are you listening or to I mean, fashion yourself according to okay see? and this says be not be not conformed right don't be fashioned or be like the world just in the same pattern as the world right. be not conformed now if there's stuff going on there's problems there's no peace listen to this verse that's right be not conformed to this world to this world but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind that ye may prove what is that Balance. good and acceptable and perfect will of god now Balance. how is our mind renewed by the word by the washing of the word why would it say by the washing of the word evidently the word washes Amen. it cleanses and cleanses Amen. Look the at this, mind look at this word transformed okay be not conformed to this world but be ye transformed and this is the word metamorpho okay where you get metamorphosis from right transfigured right like a butterfly right see it's a it's a caterpillar it's a mm -hmm. species caterpillar. Mm -hmm. After it goes through the metamorphosis in this, in the whatever that's called, it's completely a changed. different, different, a totally different being. As you read the uh, about that, it tells that what was the caterpillar in the cocoon absolutely liquefies. There's nothing left of that caterpillar. Right. It's a completely new transformed creature this Hallelujah. is what it's talking about right here right and we're going to be and we are being made just like that yes see? and we can have that we can our lives can express the lord jesus christ in all of his goodness and all of his severity and all of his holiness our lives can do that right but see? what does it say right here there this is like a, a conditional thing to being transformed really be not conformed to this world. Right. Okay? But be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, mm -hmm. that ye may prove, that you may do what? Prove. That you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Hallelujah. Okay? Prove the will of God. Isn't that an interesting verse right there? Hallelujah. But the very first part of it says, be not conformed. Right. To this world that's right hallelujah for i say through the grace given unto me now paul's saying this through the grace <laughs> given to him mm -hmm. okay thank you jesus for i say through the grace given unto me to every man that is among you not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, ought to think but to think soberly according as God hath dealt to every man the measure of faith. Okay. He's given every one of us a measure of faith. My measure might be lower than your measure, or vice versa. But I'm not to think of myself more mm -hmm. highly. Mm -mm. See, I'm to take the low place. This is what Jesus teaches us in the Gospels. Take the low place. That's what I'm doing. See, that's what Jesus said. That's what I'm doing. Jesus took the lowest of the lowest place. He did. He did. The lowest of the lowest of the low. Okay? And that's why today he's exalted as the highest of the highest of the high. Right. You see? Right. And he bids us come and be with him in that place behind the veil. Today. Say, Lord, I love you. I just love you, Lord. Okay? <laughs> when the world's crashing down around you, you'll be standing there saying, I love you, Jesus. Thank you. <laughs> See, because you know where you're going. Hallelujah. Because you're there right now in the spirit. 
You see? It's not something you have to get to. You're there. This is what God's telling us. Hallelujah! Keep reading. For as we have many members in one body, <coughs> and all members have not the same office. Right. We have to remember this. This helps us have a tranquil mind. Okay? A tranquil soul. If we remember that we don't all have the same office. We don't all, you see what I'm saying? Right. We're different members in the body of Christ. Right. Be the best member you can be. Hallelujah. Surrender. Praise the Lord. <laughs> so we being many are one body in Christ and every one members one of another. Oh, hallelujah. Having then gifts differing according to the grace that is given to us. That's an interesting right. verse right there. Having then gifts, he's asking, a, he's making a statement here. Having then gifts differing according to the grace that is given to us. So we all have a gift. Right. And we also have the grace for that gift. Amen. Now, you if, might have more than one gift. Yeah. I mean, you, you, Jesus will give you every gift right. if you want it. Right. And the grace for it, too. And you cry out. And the grace for it, too. Hallelujah. But it's important because sometimes, you know, we just read, not everybody has the same law office right. in the body of Christ. Well, if a person is trying to be in an office God has not called them to and there's no grace for, there's certainly not going to be peace in that life. That's right. <laughs> and it's going to disturb other members yeah, of the body. Yeah, it's because That's they're right. in the wrong place. That's right. They're in a place that God didn't call them to be. Exactly. Read verse, tw verse 6 <clears throat> again, sweetheart. Having then gifts differing according to the grace that is given to us, whether prophecy, let us prophesy according to the proportion of faith. Hallelujah. Or ministry, let us wait on our ministering, or he that teacheth on teaching. Glory to the King. Or he that exhorteth on exhortation. He that giveth, let him do it with simplicity. Now, you see there, he's, he's mentioning the gifts. All these different gifts. So, giving is a gift. That's right. That's right. Let's read it again. Having then gifts differing according to the grace that is given to us. Whether prophecy, let us prophesy according to the proportion of faith. Or ministry, let us wait on our ministering. Or he that teacheth on teaching. Or he that exhorteth. That's a gift. Exhortation on exhortation. He that giveth, let him do it with simplicity. He that ruleth with diligence. Mm. He that showeth mercy with cheerf cheerfulness. Cheerfulness. That's now, beautiful, that, isn't it? It is. What a beautiful word. Let love be without dissimulation. What is that word there? Oh, hallelujah. And that's agape love. It's undissembled, sincere, okay? Hypocrisy. Right, no hypocrisy. Let love be without hypocrisy. Right, right. Now, <clears throat> a lot of times people do act like they love you, but they're really being hypocrites. They really don't love you. Right here, the Bible says, let love be without dissimulation, without right. hypocrisy. And we know if we speak the truth to people, we really do love them, don't we? Right. We can really feel the grief of God when they don't receive, too, can't we? Right. But see, <clears throat> let us make sure our love is without hypocrisy. Right, exactly. Okay. That's right. Abhor that which is evil. Cleave to that which is good. Praise the Lord. Abhor means to detest. Okay, look at that word right there. It's apostugio, okay, in the Greek, to detest utterly, abhor, see, that which is evil, to detest utterly. Is there enough of that in this world, do you think? Mm -mm. Huh? In the church? Mm -mm. See? It, it's almost as if the church has been so neutered and dumbed down that it's just like putting up with all the evil. You know, mm -hmm. especially in the congregations, we've seen it. Yeah. You know, 
Oh, Lord have or mercy. Or letting it come into the, the homes. Right. Lord have mercy. We'll see right here what the Bible tells his children in his church. Abhor, Abhor that, which, that which is evil. Cleave. Cleave to, to that, that which, which is, is good. good. Okay. Oh, let me look up cleave there. I want to see what that means. <clears throat> to stick. Okay. <laughs> to stick. To glue. To glue. All right. Praise God. You know, this would be Ooh. a good question to ask ourselves do we abhor that which is evil mm -hmm. okay let's just look at our life look at the things you do in everyday life does it show forth that you abhor evil or does it show forth that you enjoy evil you enjoy watching evil going to places that are evil speaking evil of someone else it encompasses all these things, you guys. Amen. And Amen. the Bible says, abhor this. Abhor that which is evil. And if we do that, we're going to have peace in our mm -hmm. soul. We're going to reign mm -hmm. with Christ. Hallelujah. And have that peace. Verse 10. Be kindly affectioned one to another. Here's another way to have that tranquility of soul. Brotherly love. What's with affection love. there? Oh, hallelujah. I just love the Lord. His word is so good. <laughs> It's uh, cherishing's, cherishing one's kindred, especially parents or children, fond of, okay, natural relatives, fraternal towards fellow, fellow Christians, Christians kindly, kindly affectioned. affectioned, praise God, one to another, with brotherly love, that's phileo, okay, phileo love, in honor, preferring one another. In other words, putting the other first, Right. see? This is another way you can walk in that peace of Jesus. Because that's what he did. His whole life was putting others first. See? It was always putting others first. Oh, praise God. Not slothful in business. Here's another one. Not slothful in business. You work at the factory. You're a fireman. You're a policeman. Diligent. Whatever you're doing, you do it as under the Lord. Mm -hmm. And do it with all you have. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. Praise God. Fervent in spirit. Fervent in spirit. That means fan the flame. Hallelujah. Fervent in spirit. Praise Serving God. Serving the Lord. Serving the Lord. Yes, because that's who we're serving. In everything we do, we're serving the Lord. Oh, that's look at that one. Everything we do, we're serving the Lord. Do we look at it like that? Nope. Is the question. We don't. That's true. We don't. Do we look? Do we do all our work as under the Lord? We need to. Serving him. Serving him. Have Hallelujah. the mindset of serving him in every right. work we do. Let me read verse 11. Pick it up at verse 12. Not slothful in business, fervent in spirit, serving the Lord. Rejoicing in hope, patient in tribulation. Hallelujah. Continuing instant, instant in prayer. Oh, hallelujah. Distributing to the necessity of saints, given to hospitality. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Look at all that right there. Rejoicing in hope, see? When we're not slothful in business, but we're fervent in spirit, serving the Lord, rejoicing in hope. Hallelujah. See what follows? Patient in tribulation, continuing instant in prayer. Distributing to the necessity of saints. Given to hospitality. Hallelujah. And then he goes into this next section. And this is a very key point here. The Lord wants to get to us today. Because we all have associations with people that might rub us the wrong way. You understand what I'm saying? And try to get us. You were talking earlier before the broadcast about how the devil's always wanting to get us out of peace. Mm -hmm. and, and make us agitated. Irritated. Irritated. Okay. Agitated. Right. So read verse 14. <clears throat> In anxiety. <laughs> here's, a, here's a way to get through that. Verse 14. Bless them which persecute you. Oh, hallelujah. Bless and curse not. Oh, praise God. Rejoice with them that do rejoice and weep with them that weep. Oh, you know, that's one God. thing about being one in the body of Christ. When someone's going through something and you really know it in the spirit, I mean, it's like you're weeping right along with them. Amen. And then if there's a rejoicing, you can feel that too. And you're rejoicing right along that's with right. them. That's right. That's exactly right. 
be of the same mind one toward another. Does that have same on there? Yep. Same. Be of the same mind. The same mind. Hallelujah. Praise God. It doesn't really have anything on there, does it? No, it doesn't. One mind, one, one mind. mind. So it's one mind. Right. Be of the same mind. One toward another. Mm -hmm. See. Mind not high things, but condescend to men of low estate. Be not wise in your own conceits. Now this verse 16, this is a very big verse for this message. Because be of the same mind one toward another. You don't say, oh, I'm going to like that person more than I like that person. Okay. They're both brother and sister in Christ, okay, or whatever. I'm going to like them more than I like this one. No. The Lord says, uh-uh. The same mind, one toward another. See, that's like equal weights and balances. You see what I'm saying? You don't favor one over another. You don't do that in the body of Christ. We're all together side by side. Hallelujah. See? Amen. We're side by side. We're not one on top of the other. We're side by side in the body. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, praise his holy name. Praise his holy name. Recompense to no man evil for evil. That's right. Keep your peace of mind. You want to have tranquility of soul? Recompense to no man evil for evil. Not even in your mind. That's right. Oh, that's so good, Sharon. Provide things honest in the sight of all men. If it be possible, as much as lieth in you, live peaceably with all men. Hallelujah. And it is possible. Okay? It's possible on my end. Right. See? To live at peace with all men. Okay? Now, they might not make it possible, see what I'm saying, to continue to have peace. In other words, things could be, you know, attacking us in such a way where... We want to flee from it. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But I'm telling you right now, we have, we've had lots of people come against us and we've been able to live at peace. Amen. Uh, they don't usually stay around. You see what I'm saying? When they find out they can't use you or trip you up or guide you in a way that's not according to the scripture. Or control you. Or con that's what I mean. Control what you. What you say. Yeah, lead you. They, when they find that out, you know, they usually leave. Mm -hmm. Okay. But I can still have peace in my heart, even though people treat me wrong. Mm -hmm. That's the key I'm trying to get to right now. Yeah. See, no matter what your boss says to you, you can have peace. You don't have to let him ruffle your feathers. Amen? Right. It, it sure did. He sure did say something to me, though, John. That really ruffled my feathers. You know? Okay. All right. But you can still have peace. What did he say to you? He said, you're fired. Whoa! <laughs> that, you know, that would really... You know, that would make you want to really, you know, if you, especially if you haven't done anything. See what I'm saying? Uh, or you get laid off. And it's like, man, you know. But listen, God says you can have peace. All that means is God's giving you a little time to get in his word, maybe. or he, and, he, and he has a better place for you to, to be. See what I'm saying? Right. Or he's trying to get you out of the workforce. So every job you get, you know, you work two, three weeks and they let you go. And you go, man, Lord, you know, why can't I... And the Lord's trying to whisper to you something else. You see what I'm saying? Listen to the Lord. Let him guide you in what he wants you to do. Also, we know, you know, I was thinking of the last couple of broadcasts. And the Lord wanted it stressed about the plumb line and how he ha He is making a division in this hour. Right, right. Between the good and the evil. Between the true and the false. He is doing that. You know, and it's so interesting that he'll allow a situation in our life that is just the most irritating thing in the world to our flesh. And he'll allow that situation till we come to the point where we say, Lord, there's not a single thing I can do about this. I'm going to turn this over to you in my heart all the way. I'm giving it to you and I'm going to turn around and I'm going to continue going forward, and I'm going to let you take care of it. 
And I'm going to tell you, the Lord's even shown us this recently, that when we do that, God already has it in the works to take care of that problem. That's right. He's already got it in the works to take care of it. And then the time comes that he takes care of it. And he allows something to take place in you to do something to mark that day. To mark that day. Just like he has with us here recently. Mm -hmm. To mark out a line mm -hmm. for offense. Right. right. And at that very time, the Lord revealed to us that he took care of the problem. Amen. And it started to manifest that he took care of the problem. Amen. And I was like, Lord, you are so good. It's like, bam, you just did it. Here all this time, this thing that has caused such irritation and upset and anxiety, and the Lord said, it doesn't have to. Right. It doesn't have to. See what happens when you you just totally give it to me and say, you know, there's not a thing I can do about this, Father. You're the one that's going to have to take care of this. You're the one that has all the power to do it. When you finally surrender. When you finally surrender he it, does it. He does it. Amen. And he does it very quickly, I might add. Amen. And he's been teaching us that more and more right here. Right. That's right. And so this is a lesson we all need to learn and learn it well and learn it for the last time. <laughs> you know? That's so right. So we can, uh, in future things, we can act right about stuff when it happens that's right and have right attitudes and give things over to the lord very quickly instead of trying to hang on to them and get upset and irritated and and this and that that's which right. does no good anyway that's right amen amen so hallelujah therefore let's see where was i read verse 16 again okay be of the same mind one toward another. Mind not high things, but condescend to men of low estate. You know, in the body of Christ, there's these little cliques, these little circles of people and friends and blah, blah, blah. And they tend to keep other people out. Well, is right. that really how God means for things to be? No. No. No, no, there's no clicks. There should be no clicks in the true body. That's of Christ, right. That's okay? right. That's right. We're and all is. of the same mind. That's right. Correct. That's right. What? Wait a minute. He says, "Be not wise in your own conceits." Right. See, people are conceited. Don't yeah. be conceited. Yeah. Okay. Be of the same mind. Now, how can you be of the same mind if you're in this little circle, this little click, and then others are well, out? Well, they'll of tell it. you they're being of the same mind. You see. <laughs> They just want to exclude you right, or exclude right. this person or that well, person. How can you exclude no. the true body of Christ from the true body of Christ? I mean, saints, we've had this happen in our own life. People try to exclude one of us, you know what I mean? And and want to be friends with the other, you know? We're just like, this ain't working, man. <laughs> you know what I mean? That's yeah. happened, man. Well, there's it's crazy. There's like uh, motives behind <laughs> those kind of things. Right. And the Lord is trying to get his people. You guys are not thinking... Like the Lord wants us to think. Right. Oh, we're going through these scriptures again. That's good. Go ahead. Read verse 17. That's good. Yeah, I was thinking, wait a minute. Wait a minute. We've already... Okay, read, read verse 17 <laughs> again. There's something else there okay. God wants to show us. Recompense to no man evil for evil. Don't pay back evil for evil. Okay. okay. You know, this is a lesson. I think it's on a continual basis. Right. Because in the world, you're going to have this kind of uh, antagonism. I mean, it's just, you are, if you're a true Christian. There's an antagonism there. A hostility. A hostility there. Between the seed of the wicked and mm -hmm. the seed of the true. Mm -hmm. Amen. And from the bond woman, from the free one, too. Right. Okay? That's right. There's an antagonism there, too. That's right. So Between it's, the soul and the spirit, right. there is a battle taking place. Someone's walking by the soul, soul man. And someone's walking by the Spirit. There's an antagonism yeah. there from Even the within soul your, person. Within yourself, there's that, because you, your soul man, doesn't want to. Mm, it doesn't want to surrender. You see, mm -hmm. in certain areas, mm -hmm. and God says, no, no, no. Mm -hmm. You want to have total peace. You want to walk in that tranquility that I want you to have. 
in your soul and your body be in health as your soul prospers, John mm -hmm. said? Hallelujah. You have to. We have to really get what the Lord is saying to us because uh, there should be no division in the true body of Christ. Amen. There should only Amen. be Amen. one mind, one heart. And when there's not, there's... You, you, you know what it is. It's the soul it's man. It's the soul man. That's right. That's the thing that's causing the antagonism. That's right. Toward the one that's walking by the spirit. That's right. Because it brings a conviction there that, hey, that person's not walking by the spirit and they're not doing what God wants them to do and they're not obeying God. So there is an antagonism there to the one that is. Right. That's right. So this is something we need to understand and know, and also with dealing with people in the world. I mean, it would be real easy and is to get into the flesh with some people because they can just wear on every nerve you have. Right. But see, this is but also if what nerve, God's trying to teach us. Right. If your he's, nerves are subdued right. by the Spirit. You see, <laughs> That's what he's hallelujah. trying to teach us. He's saying, wait a minute, you're not supposed to be in this realm. Wait like the you rest said, of the world. Now you said nerves, okay. Now there really are physical nerves in our system, mm -hmm. you know, in our physical body. And what do they register? Touch, mm -hmm. you see. And yeah. So we say <laughs> they get on my nerves. Well, see, there's something in your soul. There's <laughs> right, it's, it's in right. the soul. That's see? exactly right. They're just bending you the wrong way. Yeah. Or maybe, you know, uh maybe you you think, well, I'm okay, and then you know somebody that's been a friend of yours a long time, you know, and then something's happening with you, and they know it, you know, and you and they keep telling you about it, keep telling you about it, and finally you say, man, you're getting on my nerves, you know, <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> well, that should be a wake-up call from the Lord that, hey, Lord, there's something you're wanting to get to, you know, mm -hmm. because, you know, Jim keeps telling me, and I know me and Jim have been friends for 20 years, you know, and, and, and uh, you know, Lord, show me, you know, because... Hey, praise God. But see, he's trying to show us all more and more <coughs> in a deeper way. <sighs> you guys have a different character from the world. That's right. You have a different nature. Right. From your old nature. That's right. Now, act like it. That's right. Bring it forth. Yes. In a Let real me, way, not a yeah. hypocritical way, but in a real way. Yeah, and that means of, get out of the way. That means get out of the way and let me do it. Jesus and that says. means a real way in the fact that it's really in your heart. Right. Not that you're yeah. just putting on some kind of show. That's right. But that it's really been wrought in your heart. See? Hallelujah. So God is so good. He is. If it be possible as much as lieth within you, live peaceably with all men. Okay, dearly beloved, go ahead, hun. Verse nineteen. You know, I want to say that with that too. Sometimes there does come a time that God will say, "You're going to have to set a boundary here." Right. You're going to have to. There's going to have to be a division here. You know. And. You mean in verse eighteen? You're talking about. Yeah. Okay. And, and we have to um, do what God says about that. Because, you know, the enemy is raging in this hour, and he's very sneaky. And he comes in in ways that you just would not Well, let's tell the story in. once again about Jerry. Because Jerry, we helped Jerry out a lot and back when we lived in Oklahoma. But Jerry, when he got mad, he would start cussing. And we didn't allow cussing on the property where, you know, we don't today. I mean, if people come over here and they start cussing, we, we tell them to refrain from their cussing. If they refuse to refrain, then they're, they're asked to leave. Okay, and that's a boundary. We, the Lord, doesn't want people. You don't have to. You don't have to. Okay. No, you don't. And uh, if you find that you're in a situation, you're in a place where someone starts cussing, you can even ask them to be quiet, and it's not even your property. You see what I mean? And if they persist in cussing and they're not going to leave, well, you can leave. You see what I mean? You can live peacefully. You just exit out the door mm -hmm. you see what i'm saying because you don't have to be around that it doesn't mean you stand there and listen to it right and uh i mean how in the world can you stand there as a true christian with the spirit of the holy god in you and stand there and listen to someone take god's name in vain and you know f this or f that every 
nanosecond of the word and just cussing, 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 and not say one thing about it. I think the word speaks of that too. And I forget which verses it is, but it's like there has to be a Let boundary. Let no filthy communication yeah. come out of your mouth in Colossians there have, 3. There has to be boundaries. Amen. And a lot of times God will have us set them. Amen. Set the boundaries. And then people will wake up too sometimes. Remember Richard Havens and he and Richard, I met him that first time I met him, remember? And I was I was talking to him and I was fixing this lady's car and I was trying to, it was at a little store that we volunteered at and and I was trying to sell him the car, you know, and I was just talking to him just happily, you know, and he started cussing at me, remember? Mm -hmm. And I said, I got right in his face. This is an old man. And I said, I said, I got right in his face. You don't have to cuss. And you like don't have that. to use that filthy yeah, I said, language. I told him, you don't have to cuss. You don't have to use that filthy language. That's what I said. Mm -hmm. And he put his fist up to me. <laughs> like he was going to punch me. And I just looked at him. And I, I said, you don't have to cuss. And I got out of his way. Well, when he came out of the store 20 or 30 minutes later, because he went there to eat lunch, he came out and he said, I'm really sorry for how I talked to you and everything. And I said, that's all right, sir. I introduced myself. He introduced himself to me. We ended up going over to his house and ministering to him. Mm -hmm. uh, so, you know, the Lord opened up doors there. And you, we are in this world, saints, and it's an evil world. And we're passing through. And on our journey through, we can have peace. We can walk in a tranquil way where that will be a magnet. People will be drawn to that. Okay? It really will. And you know, what you said with uh, Richard... If you hadn't have put boundaries, right. that ministry would have not taken place. That's right. You see That's that? exactly right. You see that? That's exactly right. See how important boundaries yeah. are? Yeah. You don't just let the devil run all over everything. That's right. And think that, that you're supposed to. Where does it say you're supposed to? That's right. No. Right. You have boundaries. You well, there's a certain there's a certain place where the Lord, and we imitate his life, when when he was persecuted, he reviled not again. See, look, keep reading. You'll see what I mean right here. Well, yeah, something like that. But I mean, I, for something just for somebody just to come up like they did with him, right? You know, and you set that boundary, and then it what was born out of that setting that boundary was ministry That's to exactly the guy. That's exactly right. That's right. So, and if you'd not ever done that, just stood there and listened to the guy in his filthy mouth. That ministry would have never right. happened. And, and, and I'm thinking of a whole different set of circumstances than right. what happened with right. Richard. Right. Okay. I'm thinking of like when you're arrested and you're put in prison. You know what I mean? Right. And well, that's when you open not your mouth. That's right. See, the Lord's got that's different. That's exactly things. right. That's exactly <laughs> He's right. He's got different instances and right. such as that. And that's when we open not our mouth. That's right. You know. Exactly. No matter what they say or Thanks do. Thanks for setting me straight. See? Praise <laughs> the Lord. Hallelujah. <laughs> Okay. okay, let's see, where are we? Verse here? 19. Okay. Dearly beloved, avenge not yourselves. Hallelujah. But rather give place unto wrath. Hmm. For it is written, vengeance is mine, I will repay, saith the Lord. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, the Lord is telling us very clearly there, you know, if stuff happens to you. Give it to me, man. That's right. Give it to the Lord, and I mean really give it to him, and just say, okay, Father, you take care of it. Amen. And I guarantee you that he will. Amen. But you got to give it to him. That's right. you got to give it all to him and not revile back and try to take it upon yourself to take care of it yourself. Right, or... Whole bitterness and unforgiveness. Oh, yeah. Whole you can't bitterness do that. And unforgiveness. You surrender that to the Lord. And if you see that, you know, when someone's been hurt over and over and over and over and over and over and over again, or lied to over and over and over and over and over and over and over again, there's a tendency there to have bitterness and unforgiveness. And if any of us find that we have that even trying to crop up at all, we need to get on our knees and say, Lord, take it out. And then if we get up from there and we find, oh, there's still some more, little, well, get right back on your knees. Amen. Till you pray Amen. it through. Amen. Till you pray it through. 
That's right. Until God gets it all out. Right. Hallelujah. That's a good you one. You know? Yes. Because we can't function correctly in the body of Christ with bitterness and unforgiveness and yeah. mistrust. That's right. And everything else That's like right, that. That's right, So. Amen, amen. Hallelujah. Dearly beloved, avenge not yourselves, but rather give place unto wrath. For it is written, vengeance is mine, I will repay, saith the Lord. Verse 20. Therefore, if thine enemy hunger, feed him. If he thirst, give him drink. For in so doing, thou shalt heap coals of fire on his head. And then he says, Be not overcome of evil, but overcome evil with good. With good. See, overcome evil with good. You see that? You overcome evil with good. What good? Jesus. He's the good. He's the goodness. His response is right. Amen? Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. If someone is coming after you, coming after us with a cursing mouth and just a real, you know, just hate, hate, hate. You know, you can just look at them and smile and say, you know what? Jesus loves you, and I'm going to really be praying for you. Amen. And they might come back with, don't pray for me. Blankety, 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 blank. <laughs> but you pray for them. That's right. And then you watch God work. That's right. But see, this all keys into giving it all to God. That's right. And I mean, don't hold no secret chamber of anything. Okay? We have to give it to him. And leave it there, as the song says. You remember that movie with, and the the black man was in there, and he was living in that little hotel, and that one guy kept telling him, "I'm gonna get you," and he was witnessing to him all the time, and he was really persecuting the old man. He finally beat the old man up, remember? Mm -hmm. And his friend told him, "Stay away from that guy, because he's he's gonna hurt you." He said, "Oh, that guy's nothing." He said, "I'm gonna win him with love." He said, I'm going to win him with love, <laughs> and he did. He said, "I'm gonna win him with goodness and love." He took a beating and everything. But at the end of the of the movie, there's the old man sitting in the jail cell with the guy. Remember? Mm -hmm. Giving him the Bible. Mm -hmm. And the guy was taking the Bible. He got saved. Mm -hmm. See? Mm -hmm. Because that one man gave his life. You see? Mm -hmm. He didn't die or nothing. But, I mean, he gave, he sacrificed his safety and everything to witness to this guy. And when God will call you to do that sometimes. I yeah. mean, he'll, he'll call you to certain tasks. That when you respond, you are perfectly protected. Yeah. Even if you got hit in the head, it wouldn't matter. Mm -hmm. Because God is with you, mm -hmm. see? And you come out victorious. And just make sure Hallelujah. you go by the Spirit of God. Because he won't always do that. Right. He has certain times that he does. You know? He has jobs for all yeah, of us to yeah. do. And but don't go out without his guidance. <laughs> That's exactly right. Don't Good go out word. without his guidance. Amen. Because that will always end up in a disaster. Amen. So. You want to go with his guidance. With him being the the fuel. Hallelujah. In amen. your tank so to speak. Because right. he is the fuel in our and tank. And you know it. Because there's that fiery thing inside our spirit. And, yeah. and we can just feel the fire of God all over us. You know. That yeah. He's sending us out to do a right. work. That's right. So and you know it, you know it in your spirit when he's doing that. Praise you God, know, yeah. don't you? Yes, yeah. I do. So. Praise the Lord. He does that every day with us here <laughs> on the broadcast. Hallelujah. Uh, he fills us with his spirit every day, more and more. You know, and I want more of the Holy Spirit. I mean, we have all the Holy Spirit, but I, I mean, I want more of the release. You release. see, I want the, mm -hmm. I want the outflow. I want it like a more, mighty river. More Hallelujah. And more and more. Amen. And the way to get that is more surrender. More surrender. Let's pray for more surrender. Father God, we ask you right now that you give us all, Sharon and I here and everyone hearing this, Lord, more surrender to you. Because that is the key, Lord. It's, it's a great big key. Hallelujah. The key of David. Surrendered unto you. Worship. Praise you. Give it to us, Lord Jesus. And let us worship you. Let us praise you. Let us respond to you, Lord Jesus, with a yes when you call. Hallelujah. Lord, we ask you that you penetrate every heart, that you spread this word far and wide. It's your word, Lord. Hallelujah. You said, open your mouth wide and I will fill it. 
He said, I send out my word, and it will not return to me void, but it will accomplish what I send it forth to do. Use this word today to accomplish what you send it forth to do in every single heart who hears it. Open hearts to receive it. Let it drop in good soil today, Lord. Hallelujah. To bear fruit a thousandfold. For your great glory and for your great name's sake. And throw the devil down under our feet in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Glory to the King. Amen. Wow, that was a powerful word today, man. God is so good. He is, isn't he? Yeah. Isn't he? He just loves us all so much. And we love him. And you can write to the King's Road 2000 at gmail.com. The King's Road 2000 at gmail.com. If you have comments or if you want to ask a question or if you need prayer or you just want to say hi, write to the King's Road 2000 at gmail.com. Amen. Amen. The Lord bless you, keep you. The Lord our God, Jehovah. Shine his holy face upon you. Hallelujah. Lift up his holy countenance on you and grant you peace. The Lord be gracious unto you. His name, that's his authority, his character be in and upon you today as you go forward conquering and to conquer. Having a tranquil soul, having rest in Christ. Being surrendered unto him in Jesus' name. Amen. Glory to the King. God bless you all. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.